Hello everyone, myself Sanat, junior resident, Department of Radio Diagnosis, Mysore Medical College and Research Institute, Mysore. I would like to thank Indian radiologists for giving me this opportunity. The title of the topic is Role of MRI in Evaluation of Primary Bone Tumors in a Tertiary Care Center. Introduction, tumor is an abnormal, benign or malignant new growth of tissue that possesses no physiological function and arises from uncontrolled, usually rapid cellular proliferation. Primary neoplasms of the skeleton are there, amounting for only 0.2% of overall human tumor burden. The evaluation of bone tumors often requires more than one imaging modality, including radiography, bone scintigraphy, CT, MRI, and PET. Radiographs provide critical information regarding lesion location, margin, matrix mineralization, cortical involvement, and adjacent periosteal reaction. Contrast Enhanced MRI can reveal the most vascularized part of part of the tumor, and MRI guidance makes it possible to avoid biopsying necrotic areas. Diffusion-weighted imaging shows restriction of diffusion of water molecules in malignant tumors. MRI is very helpful in local staging and surgical planning on assessing the degree of intermedullary extension and invasion of the adjacent physial plates, joints, muscle compartments, and neurovascular bundles. It can be used in assessing response to neoadjuvant therapy and further restaging. The post-therapeutic follow-up can also be done using MRI. Aims and objective to study the role of MRI in primary bone tumors, to determine the MRI characteristic of different primary bone tumors, to evaluate the role of MRI in prediction, prediction of <coughs> malignancy and delineation delimi of anatomic extent of primary bone tumors, correlate and compare imaging findings with surgical and histopathological findings wherever possible. Materials and methods. Study design is a descriptive type of study. The source of data was patient who are suspected or diagnosed of having primary bone tumors refer to Department of Radio Diagnosis, Care Hospital, Mysore. The sample size of our study was 40. The calculation is based on prevalence of primary bone tumor for which MRI was done is equal to 2.12% according to hospital records with level of significance of 5% and maximum allowable error as 5%. Inclusion criteria, patients with either clinically suspected or diagnosed of primary bone tumors and patients of all age groups were included. Exclusion criteria, patients with pacemakers, electromagnetic stents, patients with contraindication to contrast agents, patients having history of claustrophobia, undiagnosed suspected cases of primary bone tumors which were diagnosed as metastatic or inflammatory or infective etiology on histopathological examination were excluded from the study. Recurrent cases as orthopedic implants adjacent to the tumor sites can cause articles. Technique. Detailed history was recorded. All patients were first, first uh, evaluated with plain film examination followed by MRI. Few patients were subjected to CT scan. Patients fulfilling the inclusion and exclusion criteria underwent plain and contrast enhanced MRI. MR imaging was performed on a GE Optima MR360 1.5 Tesla MRI system. The following sequences were selected as required. Sagittal and axial T1 weighted sequence, sagittal and axial T2 weighted sequence, sagittal and axial T2 sequence, coronal proton density sequence, post-contrast fat sat T1 weighted images and axial diffusion weighted images. Results. In our study, 10 cases were in the age group of 10, age group of below 10 years, followed by 9 cases in 41 to 50 years. Primary bone tumors were more common in males than in females. In our study, most patients presented with pain and swelling. All the tumors which were incidentally found out were benign tumors, which comprised 15%. In our study, most primary bone tumors were observed in the appendicular skeleton than in the axial skeleton. Tumor is the most commonly involved bone, followed by humerus, phalanx, skull, vertebra, which constitutes 10% each. In our study of primary bone tumors, 37 cases were lytic lesions. Out of these, 22 cases were purely lytic. 6 cases were lytic destructive. 9 cases were lytic sclerotic in nature. Only 3 cases were purely sclerotic. In our study, 25 cases had a well-defined margins. Of all were benign, and 15 cases had ill-defined borders. Of all were malignant, except one, which was a benign giant cell tumor. Margin characteristics and degree of malignancy of tumor showed significant association. Comparison of zone of transition of the bone tumor with benign and malignant characteristics. In our study, 25 cases had narrow zone of transition. Of all were benign, and 15 cases had wide zone of transition. Of all were malignant, except one, which was a benign fibrous dysplasia. Zone of transition of lesion and degree of malignancy showed significant association. Comparison of radiography and MRI evaluating soft tissue involvement. Chi-square test and fissure exact test strongly significant of p-value less than 
0.01. In our study, 15 cases revealed soft tissue involvement on radiograph and MRI. In one case, soft tissue involvement was not identified on radiographs, while MRI revealed the soft tissue involvement and assisted the diagnosis and hence management of the patient. The lesion was a case of tensile cell tumor. A significant association is obtained between soft tissue component and degree of malignancy in both MRI and radiograph. Distribution of cases showing bone marrow involvement and MR on MR imaging. MR imaging determined bone marrow involvement in 36 cases. The cases which were not showing bone marrow involvement constitute four in number, and all of them were benign except one which was periosteal osteosarcom. Distribution of pathologies. In a study group of 40 cases, giant cell tumor was most common pathology observed in eight cases, followed by chondrosarcoma and osteosarcoma comprising six cases each. Distribution depending upon benign and malignant characteristic. Based on imaging, in our study of 40 cases, 26 cases were benign and 14 cases were malignant lesions. Case 1. Chondrosarcoma. Frontal radiograph of the sacrum showing ill-defined lytic lesion involving lower sacrum on right side. CT bone window showing lytic lesion with soft tissue component and faint specks of calcification involving sacrum on right side. Coronal T1, axial T2, axial stiff and diffusion weighted and post contrast T1 parasite images showing an ill-defined lytic heterogeneously enhancing T1 hypointense, T2 and still hyperintense lesion with soft tissue component showing diffusion restriction. Case of plasma cytoma, the frontal radiograph of left shoulder showing ill-defined lytic destructive lesion involving left scapula <coughs> with thin aspects of calcification within. Axial CT of left shoulder showing lytic destruction of left scapula with calcification and soft tissue component within. T1 coronal, proton density coronal, T2 coronal, and post-contrast T1 axial images showing large lobulated complex cystic mass lesion with heterogeneously enhancing solid component within, involving scapula, causing bony destruction. Cystic component of the lesion appears predominantly hyperintense on T1, T2, and proton density weighted images. Osteosarcoma, frontal radiograph, and CT images of the right knee joint shows ill-defined radiopaque lesion in metadiaphysial region of lower end of femur with periosteal reaction forming cordman triangle. Sagittal T1, coronal T2, and coronal stub images showing a lobulated mass involving lower metadiaphysis of femur appearing hypointense on T1, hyperintense on T2, and stub, with break in the cortex and extruding soft tissue component on the medial aspect. Post contrast T1 parasite image shows heterogeneous contrast enhancement, and diffusion weighted image shows diffusion restriction. Case of end chondroma, frontal radiograph of the right hand shows a well defined expansion lytic lesion with internal trabaculations and cortical break involving proximal phalanx of fourth finger. Coronal T1, coronal T2, and stir images showing a well defined altered signal intensity lesion with, within proximal portion of the proximal phalanx of the index finger appearing hypointense on T1 and homogeneously hyperintense on T2 and stir images. Case of giant cell tumor, frontal and lateral radiograph of the right knee showing well defined lytic lesion with internal trabaculations involving heavy metaphysial region of lower end of femur. Coronal CT image shows soft tissue component within. Sagittal T1, coronal T2, and coronal stir images showing a fairly well defined lobulated T1 hypointense, T2 and still heterogeneously hyperintense lesion in epimetaphysial lesion of lower end of femur. Contrast coronal T1 images shows heterogeneous contrast enhancement. Case of talar aneurysmal bones is oblique and frontal radiograph of foot and ankle. Foot with ankle shows expansive lytic lesion with internal septations within noted in talus. Coronal CT image shows cortical break. Coronal T1, sagittal T2, and sagittal stir images se sequence show an expansive multiloculated lytic lesion with fluid fluid level within, noted in talar bone. On post contrast, sagittal T1 fat sat images shows no evidence of enhancing soft tissue component. Discussion. In our study, 40 cases of either suspected or diagnosed primary bone tumors were included. Age range of cases was 11 to 65 years with a mean age of 28 years and most patients were in the age group of below 20 years, comprising 25% of cases. The result obtained was comparable with the previous prospective observational study conducted by Julia et al. in 2016. Lesions were more common in males than in females. Similar results showed in previous study conducted by Obalam DC et al. in which 60% were males and 39.4% were females, giving a male to female ratio of 1.5 to 1. In our study group of 40 cases, 26 cases were benign, comprising 65% of undressed 14 cases were malignant. In a retrospective study by Obalam DC et al., 356 were benign, while 342 were 
malignant, which was comparable with our study. Giant cell tumor was the most common pathology, observed in eight cases, followed by six cases of chondrosarcoma and osteosarcoma, followed by enchondroma, comprising five cases. A comparable result was showed in a prospective observational study by Julia et al., which showed giant cell tumor of the bone was the most common histological diagnosis, followed by aneurysmal bone cyst. Conclusion: An algorithm. An algorithmic approach that combines the radiographic and MR imaging characteristic with established demographic data helps to narrow down differential diagnosis of primary bone tumors. Conventional radiography is the first line of investigation for bone tumors. The radiographs can localize the lesion and determine the aggressiveness based on the margins, zone of transition, and soft tissue component. This helps the radiologist to make an informed differential diagnosis. MRI is preferred modality to image musculoskeletal system and should be obtained after a radiographic evaluation. Its multiplanar imaging capability helps delineate extent of tumor and invasion of the adjacent physial plates, joints, muscle compartments, neurovascular bundles with high contrast resolution. These are my references. Thank you.